Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the rebate, rebate, <laughs> the recap of Roubaix. Paris Roubaix Femme avec Zwift, as well as the final stage of the Tour of the Basque Country. A really exciting double header with two fantastic races. Bit of a shame they're both on simultaneously. Probably be ideal in yeah. future to have the uh, Catalonia set up with Canvevelem, where Basque Country finishes. Uh, a couple of hours before the Roubaix final. Regardless, we'll start with Roubaix. Starting, though, in Denain, despite the uh, nomenclature being from Paris, it's no such thing. Starts in Denain in the northeast of France and goes to Roubaix with the final. Basically the same from... Uh, Orna- oh, I can't say it. Ornang a Wondinia. It's not... No, that's Roughly. not made, made up language. 150 Ks, 17 sectors... The two five-star sectors that you'll be familiar with are Com- uh, Carrefour de Labre and Monzon Pavel, which come 45 and 18 k's or so from the finish. There's also Camfin en Pavel uh, before Carrefour de Labre and Orchi and Orchi Les Orchi, where sometimes you see some pretty big attacks from riders yeah. opening up the race about 50 k's to go. And uh, with Gapeki Vibers as the doubleheader Benji. I think I picked Longa Borghini to win. She didn't even start today. <laughs> exactly. She did not start today. And Why? Also, also, um, my wife noted as well when the race started, where are the CXers at? Where's yeah. Puck? Where's Femme? Where's Shirin? <laughs> Neither of them are here. And like, yeah, they've got that punchy quality, but I reckon they do pretty good in a, a race like Roubaix. The length is there, but... The cobbles are there too, so um, I wish they were here as well. But that being said, I'm not sure that would have influenced the race outside uh, of just more people in the front groups. I, I think say, it would have influenced it a I lot. I think Longo Borghini would have influenced it a lot. Yeah, former winner. I mean, you look at Puck Peterson, sixth yep. in Tour of Flanders, fifth in Dwarves Tour, and seventh in Gen Wevelheim. And the way I see the women's Roubaix so far, I don't see a huge advantage. Like, in, in in the men's Roubaix, there is a big bifurcation in the weight. And I think... What's the bifurcation? Like a split in terms of... I don't even know if I used it correctly. Like a split down the middle in terms of Tour of Flanders, the mm-hmm. punchers can compete like Alphalib and Pagacha. But in Roubaix, really, like, you got to be over 70 kilos minimum. Even someone like Pithy, it's like, if a bit small, you want to be 80 kilos. In the women's, we've seen Paladin come fourth, and she's a puncher. So... The the Peterses or Fan Fem Van Empels, I agree. Very surprised not to see them in Longo Borghini, as you said, former winner. So that was somewhat surprising. Uh, regardless, we had Kopecky on the start list. Uh, but yes. this is the big one that had eluded her. World champion, twice Tour of Flanders winner, started twice yes. winner, Omlope. But she never won this race before. Uh, and they had Vibus here in good shape as well. Exactly. And when the race kicked off, we're looking at the, the first, like, Half of the race, there's so much access to try and join the breakaway, but we basically go to the first sector with a with a proper peloton, is how I perceived it. And like I missed quite a bit of the start of the of the non-broadcasted segment because I was I was riding Rube myself, basically. But that's for a story time at the end. Let's go to the race first. First sector, we see DSM at the front. So they're taking it up for Papa Georgie. She's in third for fourth wheel, if I recall correctly. But it's always like this. They pace on the cobble sector, they drop people, but after the cobble sector, they stop pacing, and it's kind of a moment where a lot of people come back, but that also makes it a bit attritional, because you notice after the second sector, where Little Shrek does that exact same thing, some people don't come back anymore. And in the third sector, we already see an attack from the favorite, from a favorite, correction. Lotte Kopecky starts hard pacing slash low-key attacking, is how I would describe it, and it creates a group of like roughly 10 riders. Georgie's there, Shabby's there, Voz is there, but I vividly recall there, there being also little track riders in this one, but again, we get over that sectors, groups are just gradually coming back, and yeah, that's how these, how these first few sectors kind of happen, and it really started kicking off at Orshi, but before that, Kopecky had a bike problem, right? She was asking for a tool for her handlebars? Her handlebars were loose, so she got the Allen key out the car and started adjusting her handlebars. Uh, there'd been crashes before. I don't know if she'd crashed. I know Allison Jackson crashed almost out of neutral early on, yeah. but these things happen uh, in Roubaix. So 
Capegi clearly going to be the attacker, and it looked like it looked like the way Van der Poel and Philipson work. Capegi's the attacker, yep. and then Vibers is the sprinter, and she just sits in, and she's a threat that nobody ever wants to work with or pull with her in the wheel yep. uh, to the velodrome. So it's the the best one two punch you probably could have in in women's classic cycling, and so. That seemed to be the idea, Benji. And without Elisa Longo Borghini, she's her mm-hmm. and Sharon Van Amroy, they're the real attackers. Yep. For for little Trek. I see Van Dyke more as a a pacer. Mm. Uh, she doesn't have that snap to get separation the same way Elisa Longo Borghini does. I agree, but when she does get the separation, she's got the engine to keep that gap against a lot of people. So that's a danger. If she can get some kind of group dynamic, no response to her attack. Then there is something there, and that does come into play, but not yet. Because we go into Orshi and Orshi les Orshi, the Orshi sectors. Visma's pacing on the Orshi uh, sector, but afterwards on the Orshi les Orshi sector, we see another attack from Kopecky. And there and then, it becomes very clear that Kopecky can split this group up whenever she wants. But can she drop important riders in that group? Schweinberger was able to follow, Georgie was able to follow again, Voss again. And Lorena Wiebus, but no little track riders there. Van Dijk was not there. There was literally no one there. And which then ends up dropping Wiebus, just hard drops off the wheel of those four or five riders. But after that segment, we go towards Mozan Pavel. And I don't know if it was at the start of Mozan Pavel or on Mozan Pavel, but Alan Van Dijk basically brings Group 2 back. And that sets us up for the last 45 kilometers in this race. Were you surprised that Kopecky didn't attack on Mozan Pavel, but did on like a slight uphill after? Yeah, it seems she didn't attack on those cold sectors and then they'd get off and I don't know if it's, it's like a bone and move, but yeah, she'd immediately attack <laughs> on the asphalt trying to get away, which is a great move for a dark horse or a second tier rider. So if you're yeah. trying to get away as a Grace Brown or Jade Veal, I think, did it later, or uh, Crack, or someone like that on FDJ, yes. it's a great spot to do it. If you're the race favorite, people don't so quickly just uh, let you go on the, on the asphalt section. So uh, a little bit strange, but I guess I was surprised on Mons en Pavel. I didn't really know what Voss' plan was, because... Yeah, I didn't know if she wanted to thin it out or what, but uh, or full-blown attack. Uh, she seemed to be in two minds as well. Uh, and yeah, for a five-star sector, Mons en Pavel really wasn't, wasn't that selective at all. Yep, exactly. And that attack from Kopecky also didn't do much. It creates splits again, but no follow-up. So you once again get like, a, I'm just guessing, but I reckon it was like a 30-women group at that point. Then, then we get a bit of a, a slightly... I hope she isn't heard, but it was also slow-key funny kind of thing where Romy Casper falls into a ditch, into like a, a poopy ditch is how I would describe it. Because <laughs> her entire bibs were like all mud, stuff like that. So she might smell a bit at the dinner table tonight, but she was riding really well there today. And uh, if I recall correctly, Romy Casper was the last rider last year. Well, the only rider who didn't crash in that favorites group when Kopecky and so forth crashed last year. So the fact that she was there means she's good in, in these Sparrow Bay kind of kind of races. So once again, she was there. She crashes this time around, unfortunately. But then it starts, eh? The, I wouldn't say it's rolling attacks. It's just one rider attacking a billion times, right? Yeah, Van Dyke attacks a fair few times. Oh, well, not a fair few. Yeah, over and over and over <laughs> in the next 10k phase. Uh, there's also an anticipation from from Jade Veal in this in this phase. Kopecky's actually really not pulling at all. Like she's closing a few gaps if Voss goes. She's she's making sure she's in the front three wheels on the sectors. But Kopecky's not really spending now any bullets in this last 45 minutes uh, at this point the, at all in the race. Uh, she's running much much more conservatively. And then when Van Dyke goes. Visma start to to chase that. They were also helped by DSM because they have five for Georgie here. And uh, yeah, Van Dyke goes again, catches Krak. Visma chase and basically launch. Uh, I don't know if they even launched Voss at any point. They were just pacing. Uh, yeah. And then I think Cock and Georgie on one sector before Kampan Pavel. Georgie gets, she gets bumped by Francisco Cock at the, in the I middle don't... of the cobbles. I don't know what it was. They were just... It, I, I'm not even sure it was on a cobble sector. It looked like it was after a cobble sector to me. And they were stuck in each other. 
Koch was, I think, behind, and then and then Georgie was ahead. And it it's probably not the case, but it looked like the front wheel of Koch was like rubbing against the the disc brakes of of Georgie, who then started braking, and I don't know what was happening. But they lost a bit of a gap. Georgie had to come back. Georgie came back relatively swiftly, to be honest. And I don't know. It's so far. It hasn't been the best Paris Roubaix uh, uh, fun because we've very we've cagey. Gotten it. Yeah, very cagey, and the moves do make splits, but then everything comes back because there's no follow up, and that just keeps happening to the point that we get to Confin, Pavel, Carfoot, Larber with a relatively large group, in my opinion. Big group, and yeah, also like FTJ, we're obviously trying to anticipate, but a lot of the other teams weren't, and I was surprised because. It's not like SD Works had an abundance of domestiques. It's Quebec yep. and Vibas. Uh, the Visma domestiques aren't going to close everything, and, and Trek also aren't that numerous. So I really was surprised with the group so big that there weren't more riders trying to anticipate before Carfan Pavel and Carrefour de Labre. But yep. regardless, we get there. Uh, Quebec attacks on Carfan Pavel. She's followed by Voss and Balsamo. They get to Carrefour de Labre, and... Is this the sector, Benji, where Georgie's off the back trying to close all on her own? She's, just, she's riding basically the same pace as them, mm -hmm. if not quicker. Correct. And then after Voss attack, no, before Voss attack, Van Dijk paced like half the sector, the first half of the sector, full gas on the front, dropping Balsamo? Yep, that is, uh, well, so on Confound Pavel, Kopecky attacks, Voss and Balsamo follow. Van Dijk gets caught by those riders, so Balsamo is in that group. And it's on Confound Pavel that that Von Day keeps spacing and eventually Balsamo hard drops just before the end. And Croc is just still in that front group. Like, together with Von Day, together with... No, together with... Yeah, together with Von Day, together with Kopecky, together with uh, Voss. Can I tell you something? My most notable conclusion from this morning, going over the parkour myself, the last eight sectors, is that Confound Pavel is unironically almost just as hard as Carford Larbre. The length is so much, and your steer just keeps wobbling like crazy. My hands were hurting, everything was hurting, and I, I was in more pain on that sector than on car for itself. Yeah, it's because it's, it's not. It's almost as long. It's because you can go harder maybe on car fan because car four is more. You got to make sure you don't crash. In my case, at least. So maybe that's why I felt like it hurt more. <laughs> maybe, and yeah, they come back to back. It was quite strange to see Van Dyke. Basically, hard pacing yeah. to put a sprinter off the back. You think, you think the play would be to get through Carrefour de Labra with two in the group of five, have Georgie come back, and then when and then attack with Van Dyke, and then Voss and Kopecky look at each other. You would think, yeah. but in fact, she drops uh, Balsam <laughs> hard pacing. And we get to Gruzon. Voss tries to keep the pace up to try and keep Balsam off the back. But again, Kopecky's kind of following a little bit more in the wheels. Voss also yeah. seems in two minds. And, and again, not too... I gotta be... There's no... There's one attack from Van Dyke. There's no yeah. attack from Georgie. And no attack... I'm not sure if Krak was still in the group. It's she, she was. She was slightly in trouble. She also closed the initial Voss attack for Kopecky with Kopecky in the wheel. So it's like Krak was trying to stay alive, stay following with everybody while trying to follow every attack that she could possibly do. And I felt like at a certain point she switched towards, I just hope this group stays ahead so I can be in the top X amount of riders. Yeah, is that fair? May, maybe, but then Kopecky, Voss, Balsamo, like you got no chance at the podium if you stay oh, with those three. You normally, normally, and then uh, with George, that wasn't the case. But yeah, maybe she was, was dead. Maybe she had anticipated, so that that's also understandable. And and for for Bol, uh, Kopecky, Van Dyke starts pacing. Kopecky doesn't have to pace because she's got Vibers in the group behind, and she that's the ultimate sprint card. So I guess after one attack from Van Dyke that was very easily closed. We know we're going to a sprint in the velodrome because Van Dyke just gets on the front and just starts pulling yeah. the whole way. We get to the velodrome. There's a huge fight three wide into the corner of the velodrome. Voss actually spends a bit of energy fighting there, fighting Georgie and, and Van Dyke for, for no gain at all. And then it ends up in a strange position. 
Van Dyke does the first lap on the front. The Bell lap, last 500 to 400 meters. Georgie goes to the front. Probably not where you want to be either. Uh, if you're five for Georgie, you probably want to be a little bit deeper. And she sort of half leads it up, doesn't fully open it up. Voss then goes underneath her. Also not in the drops. Voss was on the hoods almost the entirety of the sprint. Goes underneath her. Balsamo comes around Georgie on the right-hand side uh, on the back straight. And then Kopecky just goes higher up the, on the, barri on the, the, uh, the banking. Gets into the wheel of the slipstream of Balsamo, gets the run in at 200, and then opens up as it straightens out 100 to 75 to go, and just absolutely dusts both of them. With Voss actually going way too early and losing, uh, losing a lot in the sprint in the end. Kopecky winning easily in the sprint, beating yep. Balsamo second. Georgie actually beats Voss on the throw to take a surprising third, which she was very happy about. Voss fourth, Krak fifth, Van Dyke sixth. Vibers won the bunch sprint behind for seventh. Victoire Berto, uh, eighth, Lene, and then Kimberly Pinar uh, was 10th, the rider from uh, Mauritius, actually, yep. who's had a good classic season. It's kind of a breakout year, the 28 year old. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there some podcasts? Uh, I think Ellen Van Dijk has a podcast with someone. I, I think Wechkletzner or something it's called. And on there, Van Dijk noted, why, why is this? Why is this? Is uh, Pinar able to wear the rainbow, the rainbow um, thingies on her on her arms? But it was just the Mauritius flag, so there was an entire discussion about the rainbow colors on, on the fucking shirt of Pinar, as if as if she was a criminal about it. It was just the Mauritius flag. Anyway, that aside, Kopecky winning this in such a fashion. I gotta be honest, with about 300 meters, she was in a shit position, and I I thought she she's lost like. I don't think I vividly remember any edition of any Paris-Roubaix men's or women's where, well, in women's there weren't many sprints, but in men's Roubaix, I don't remember an edition where someone wins from that position. With that deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, normally because the, the, the last bend only straightens out like at 60 meters to go yeah. or less. There's not, a, not much straight, but basically Balsamo and Voss must have been going backwards. Uh, in that sprint, I don't know the wind conditions in the velodrome, uh, but yeah, she to come through and not and not just win by a throw, like she won by a bike lane yeah. too. So uh, that was quite surprising and impressive. So yeah, it's uh, SD Works. Uh, did they win Tour of Flanders? They didn't. Uh, no. A lot of Kopecky rumors of her demise were greatly exaggerated. Not so washed after all. Win Strada <laughs> this year and Roubaix. Uh, but yeah, I think Trek will be maybe wondering why they didn't bring their ace, yep. uh, at least along with Borghini, because if you got her, Van Dyke, and Balsamo in that finish... And maybe Shirin? Yeah, I think you can make, uh, make SD Works life very, very uncomfortable yep. in the last 20 kilometers. And to totally be honest, I think Longa Borghini would have won, but uh, she's not here, so you can't win. I'm not sure about winning, but I agree that it would have made it more difficult for us because they can just roll attacks with their riders in that sense. And now they didn't have the numbers to do that. So the same rider had to keep doing it, which was Van Dijk. So that's the situation you get at the end of it. By the way, I'm kind of happy Balsamo didn't win for the sole fact that I don't remember at what kilometer she did it, but to get with a different rider, they basically got a corner on like the, the foot and bike path uh, to move up in the peloton. So if you do the consistency of what happened to Royster, then she should have been disqualified, actually. She's been disqualified from this race before as well, if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to get a sequel to it. <laughs> from the, was, the, was it like the sticky, was a sticky bottle, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, it was a long or sticky draft, bottle something. in the first edition, I think. Um, but yeah, I didn't see that. But uh, anyway, Kopecky wins. I hope for a fight for Georgie Flyer in the win, but she was actually quite happy for third in the end. And that's... Uh, is that her best monument results? PCS. Uh, well, it's not her best classics results. She won Brugge de Pana last year, but maybe her biggest race result against, uh, yeah, against the Kopeckis of the world. Uh, any thoughts on this? Was it is the parkour long enough, Benji? 
I don't know. Do they need I, to make it longer? Because of I was surprised to see such I a want group. It. Bef- at, after Monzon Pavel, and then the state, the state, sort of nothing happening from Monzon Pavel to Cafu de Labra. Like, I dream of seeing through it Adam Berg in a women's race in, in Paris de Bethon, but even if you don't want to do that for safety reasons, for example, well, just put a few chicanes in front of it. But if you, if you don't want to do that, just go from Havre or something straight to, straight to Ronald Wadini, maybe have to a few sectors more before that. I reckon on, I, I would dig it being longer. And like with the rainy edition with Dignan, that's completely different because every single race, is short or long, will be attritional and will be crashes everywhere. But in this specific edition, it was closed off so much and it was tailwind for most of the final, I would say. The only pure headwind part was the second uh, half of Carrefour de l'Arbre, the last straight of Carrefour de l'Arbre. So looking at a, at a parkour, a lot of tailwind. So it's more the, it felt more like the group dynamic caused it to stick together. and. That would suggest that you've got a parkour that allows domestiques to survive that far. That makes sense? Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, maybe, I don't know if it's more cobbles or just a longer race needed. I don't think it should be shorter than the Tour of Flanders by 15Ks. That is Move Al to, to Denain, put it at the start of the race, and see what happens. <laughs> and Demi, Demi, Demi Vollering will win. <laughs> Well, uh, it depends, eh? And if you do the last few kilometers of Alduez, I don't know. I'm just. Imagining. I could you get out 25 k so There's no problem. Uh, whether yeah, you want to add okay. extra cobbles or not, but yeah, Kevin Vaughan's 171. This is 148. I can you get out 25 k's? But as you said, in the rainy edition, you probably want to take take away kilometers because <laughs> basically whoever gets ahead early will win. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, any other learnings from the race, Benji? Schweinberg was good for a little bit, but then missed the right, wrong move. Crack, good result. Any other young riders that really took your eye? Like Zoe Backstep was good for a, for yep. a nineteen year old in her uh, fourth race in the in, in the uh, well, not in the big league. She raced World Tour race the last year, but her first sort of uh, monument, I think. That's not true. She did Tour of Flanders last year at eighteen. Um, I'd say Likinoyan from, I think, I think Visma got 19, 22 years old. I think that's strong. The fact that she was there for, uh, for, for Voss for a while, I think that that shows that if she grows a bit more, she can play a bigger role in the final. I think that's something. I, I was also looking at, um, uh, what's her name? I completely forgot who I was talking about, but firstly, I think... I don't know. I don't know if there's really youngsters in the first X amount outside of Backstead and so forth and and maybe um unexpected that I would see Sophie von uh von Berschward also in the final as much, like 14th. That's that's pretty good. Berto has stepped up at Coffee. She's been really consistent, top 15 at RVV plus top 10 at Roubaix. So I reckon as a French champion, she's definitely showing herself. But I guess I guess it's again. The same ride as we already see us all stepping up. Amber Kra coming from a different sport, if I recall correctly. Wasn't seen in rowing or something before she went into the sport. Showing up in that top five, being really prominent in the final. For the men's race, do we learn anything there? I think, well, there's one thing. It's drier than I thought. I agree. And secondly, the the yellow thingy that Van der Poel almost crashed on last year on Williams Ham was taken away in that corner. In that corner, there's no thingies on the asphalt segment in the side, like blocks of whatever it's called. So, yeah, uh, yeah, there was there was not many crashes, which is good. The, on no. the in the, what I could see, I mean, there was pretty seemed in pretty good condition based on the the yep. women getting through without any problems, and and not even any decisive punctures in the last hour that I could remember. True. So it seems that they're in as good a shape as one could expect for these sort of cobbles. Uh, Especially Monzon you... and Carrefour de Labra, which can be, uh, Monzon can be quite wet and muddy. Alene Sierra has been very consistent this year. UCI points galore, I'd reckon, but also, are you surprised that she can top 20 a race like Roubaix? Because she's sub 60 kilos, right? No, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Uh, she's fifth in, in Nocker, of course. It's a hard cobbled mm-hmm. race with, with the door in it. I, th- I think the women's has the door in it. 
Yeah. And yep. that's a, a really hard flat cobble sector. So Mate, you got stopped by a crane there, right? I just went through. <laughs> <laughs> through the crane. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised you go classics rider. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It's like she's not the biggest rider. Um, the Any other news from... Okay, I think that's about it for this race, to be honest. It yep. was a uh, yeah, good race. Good night. Uh, and Kapeki deserved winner. And SD Works played their cards right. Uh, other news for Rebay tomorrow is that Tom Pidcock is actually starting for Ineos. Yes. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, after the video of him being carried out of the team bus on Monday after the crash in the TT recon. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe he can be the exception to my theory that not theory, I think it's bound in reality, that uh, smaller riders would struggle more in Roubaix. He obviously won the, I don't know if it was the juniors. Uh, no, it was the U23 edition of this race in 2019, but that's five years ago. And so we'll see. Uh, I was I was surprised. And Ineos signed on the start list for Brabantse Pale, Benji, which he won. Yep. Uh, and Sheffield won. Uh, uh, an Ardennes, uh, a lighter Ardennes race on Wednesday. So I am, I am surprised to see their TDF GC guy doing a Roubaix whilst Ganner is on the mountain. But agree, not not my decision. <laughs> but, he obviously wants to do it. Yeah, that's true. And we also had the update that Mohoric wasn't starting, but I don't remember if we mentioned that in the preview or whether that came that, out yeah. afterwards. So yeah, Mohoric is starting. And we didn't know Ruby. Laporte was starting. Uh, well. First it was announced that he was starting, then it was slightly adapted. Now it's again announced that he's starting, right? Yeah, Lepoy is starting. Yeah. Yeah. Um But yeah, we'll see what the men's race tomorrow. Forecast is okay weather, maybe maybe some tailwind, so it's gonna be fast again. It's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy fight. Like the fight for the break last year was crazy. I can't yeah. wait. 